During World War II, soldiers faced a far more brutal kind of cold than most modern campers ever will. Frozen mud, zero insulation and relentless snowstorms were part of daily life on the front lines. Yet, despite the conditions, soldiers found ways to stay warm through nights that should have been unbearable. Their secret wasn't fancy gear or modern sleeping bags. It was a field-tested survival trick that relied on nothing more than resourcefulness and physics. Soldiers learned that insulation wasn't about warmth. It was about trapping air. One of the greatest misconceptions about surviving the cold is believing that warmth comes from external sources. Thicker blankets, more fire, or high-tech sleeping bags. But World War II soldiers learned through necessity that true warmth comes from how well you can trap air. Air pockets, when sealed properly, act as invisible insulation barriers, preventing body heat from escaping. Instead of relying on thin bedding or freezing tents, soldiers used layers of dry vegetation, straw, pine boughs, dried leaves, even grass, to create what they called a thermal bed. By piling six to eight inches of this material beneath and around their sleeping spot, they built a cushion of trapped air that prevented heat loss to the frozen ground. Modern science backs this up. Even the best sleeping bag loses its effectiveness when compressed on cold soil. The soldier's trick created a natural buffer that stayed warm long after the fire burned out. A practical way to use this today is simple. If you ever find yourself camping or stuck in the cold without adequate gear, gather dry organic matter, preferably pine needles or straw, and form a layer about eight inches thick. Lie on top and then, well, cover yourself with another four to six inches of the same material. The trapped air will hold your body heat better than most budget sleeping pads or synthetic liners, you see. They use their own clothing as a heat retention system, not just for protection from the cold. WWB troops quickly realized that layering wasn't just about piling on garments, it was about moisture management and vapor control. The enemy wasn't only the cold air, but the sweat that froze once movement stopped. Soldiers in the Ardennes forest or eastern front often spent days soaked through, then faced nights below zero. The men who survived longest were those who learned how to keep their base layers dry. They followed a simple principle. One dry layer next to the skin, one breathable layer to trap warmth, and one outer shell to block wind. Wool was prized because it could insulate even when damp. Soldiers often slept with their outer uniforms open to let sweat evaporate before lying down, then wrapped up tightly to trap the residual heat. In modern terms, this is the same principle used in cold-weather hiking. Cotton is a killer. It holds moisture and drains heat from your body. Wool or synthetics that wick moisture combined with a breathable middle layer replicate the same soldier-approved system. If you camp in cold regions, always keep a dry sleep layer separate from your active clothing, just as the old soldiers did. They built heat-reflecting shelters instead of relying on fires. A common mistake among inexperienced campers is building a large fire and assuming it will keep them warm all night. W. Putu soldiers learned quickly that heat radiates away into the air unless you control it. Their solution was to build what they called half-shelters or reflector walls. 
By stacking logs, stones, or even snow in a curved wall formation opposite their small fire, they reflected radiant heat directly toward their bodies. Combined with a low overhang or top, this created a microclimate that was often 20 degrees warmer than the surrounding air. Some soldiers dug shallow depressions or foxholes lined with branches and packed snow around them, using the earth itself as insulation. This method works remarkably well today. When building a campfire in cold weather, stack a reflective barrier of green logs, large rocks, or even aluminum-covered panels a few feet behind it. Place your sleeping area just in front of the fire, about three to four feet away, and you'll feel the trapped heat cycle between you, the fire, and the barrier, instead of disappearing into the night. They discovered that dry feet and head warmth mattered more than blankets. One forgotten rule from World War II field manuals stated, A man freezes from the feet up. Soldiers learned that the quickest path to hypothermia was neglecting their boots. Feet sweat constantly during marches, and wet socks combined with freezing soil led to instant heat loss. So the solution was routine. Dry the feet every night, rub them with any oil or fat available, and, if your socks were soaked, stuff them with dry straw. They also understood that, well, more heat escapes from the head than anywhere else on the body. That's why, even in their sleep, they wrapped scarves or rags around their heads just to prevent heat loss. These simple habits, honestly, often made the difference between a man waking up or never waking at all. In a modern camping setup, always prioritize keeping your feet dry. Carry spare socks, use plastic liners if you have to, and, you know, elevate your boots off the ground when you're resting. And never underestimate a good wool cap. Even a thin layer over your head can preserve significant body heat overnight. Ah, the real secret was energy conservation and shelter efficiency. You know, perhaps the most powerful lesson from W. Poirot's survival training was that warmth isn't only about insulation, it's about efficiency. Soldiers, they learn to minimize heat loss by huddling together, blocking drafts, and keeping shelters low to the ground. Quite ingenious, really. They conserved body energy by eating high-fat foods before sleep, as the slow-burning calories acted like internal fuel through the night. For instance, soldiers were often issued tinned meats or butter-rich rations in winter. Eating a spoonful of fat before bedding down provided energy that kept core temperatures stable for hours. It's fascinating how simple actions made such a difference. Modern campers can, you know, replicate this by eating a small fatty snack before bed. Peanut butter, cheese, or even just a handful of nuts all work the same way. The next time someone tells you modern camping gear makes the old ways obsolete, just remember that World War II soldiers stayed alive through ingenuity, not luxury. They mastered the balance between body heat, insulation, and efficiency using what nature provided. Their methods, honestly, remain timeless lessons in survival control moisture, trap air, reflect heat, protect your extremities, and feed your inner furnace. Those simple habits saved thousands of lives long before high-tech materials ever existed. If you value the forgotten skills that once kept entire armies alive, 
Go ahead and subscribe to Backyard Wisdom for more survival truths from history that, frankly, still work better than most modern gear today.